Hello to everyone here in the Zoom room, everyone on Facebook. My name is Karen Trujillo, and I am here with Light Partners, Bob and Noel, for our weekly Co-Creators Convergence Conversation. We have a fabulous guest tonight, and before we let you know who is here and what we're going to be doing, we're going to tell you a little bit about Co-Creators Convergence in this wonderful video that was created by Noel. And I love the beginning of these evenings because this little clip is fast. I like to dance during it. And it gives you insight as to why we choose to gather every Thursday evening as co-creators. We are here to share our gifts for the evolution of humanity. And we ask the question, what gifts are you sharing to evolve humanity? So let's watch this little video clip and uh, then we'll get our evening started. And um, this evening, um, we actually have Lisa Shad with us for some soul collage. And before I tell you a little bit about Lisa, I'm just going to ask all of us to take a moment for some centering in our soul. So wherever you are, if it's safe to close your eyes and ground your feet, let's just close our eyes for a moment. And we invite all of those who are watching on Facebook as well to just take a moment, eyes closed, a little serenade to your soul with some silence. So often it's easy for us to remember to walk in silence in nature maybe even in our own home. And now with the expansion of technology and all of our Zoom rooms and Facebook and other social media, it's a beautiful invitation to take a silent moment amongst our social media applications. So when you're ready, open your eyes. Maybe just take one more big inhale and exhale together. Tonight, we're going to do one of my favorite things, which is called surfing your soul. And Lisa is, we have a really exciting evening ahead of us where she is going to be taking us on a very deep and personal journey that we have the opportunity to go deep within ourselves to share with each other here on Zoom. And for those of you watching on Facebook, you can take this moment for the next 30, 40, 90 minutes to, to join us and participate in what Lisa is going to show us, this little extra portal into our soul. So Lisa has been a body worker and massage therapist for about 25 years. She has been a soul collage facilitator for the past eight years. And she uses both of these modalities in her healing practice in her hometown in Northern Alabama. 
She is really, when, when Lisa and I spoke on the phone a couple of times to prepare for this, the thing that she was so excited about is what a perfect fit what she's doing in the world is for co-creators convergence. Because we literally are going to be making our own personal cards tonight for our co-creative conscious self. So I get excited when I'm talking to somebody and they're just ecstatic and giggling and laughing. And, and Lisa and I have only talked over the telephone, yet she just was overwhelmed at what a great opportunity. So Lisa, we thank you for saying yes to this co-creative process. I know that you are going to give us a little bit more introduction as far as details of what will be happening tonight. And I am just going to make one more announcement for those of you who might just be joining. This is a moment where you can go gather five by seven card, construction paper, the back of a paper bag. You can get creative. Scissors, tapes, glue, magazines. I have colored pencils and markers as well. And um, Lisa, Thank you so much for this evening. I already know how phenomenal it's going to be based on some of the conversations we've been having. And I'm going to hand it over to you to share more about what we'll be experiencing tonight. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you for the invitation. What an opportunity. Um, and I'm a big show and tell person. So I. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> um, so. I think we're going to, so here's the book. You see the other screen? Oh, not everyone can see the, can you highlight the, my phone screen? Bob and Noel? There you go. Yes, it's highlighted. Now where did it go? Oh, no, I don't see it. <laughs> Technology is so fun. Gallery view. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so Soul Collage comes from Cena Frost. And this is her second edition, this is her book. And she studied with Jean Houston. And um, basically the cards reflect aspects of ourselves, archetypes and who is, who's in our daily, who's running, who's driving the bus. And so it helps us learn more about ourselves and um, who we are in the world. And so, um, it's very accessible. You can go to the web page and watch a free video on how to do this. So if you don't learn everything tonight, then <laughs> um, you can go there and watch videos on how to do it, different ways to do it. So I'm a facilitator, which means I coach people in how to do this. And typically it's in groups, but also one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, sometimes people come just for that. Sometimes we mix it up with their bodywork session. Um, so making a card about their shoulder, what's it saying? What does it look like? What are the colors? What's the energy? What's going on there? How does it fit in with the rest of the body? So those kinds of, that's a whole nother way to use it. And so the idea is that you, um, let's say, so this is my, this is my healer card, or my massage. So this represents me in the work I do. And so it doesn't look very massagey, but it's not, it's a metaphor. It doesn't have to look exactly like that. That's the idea of collage. So I feel that I connect um, the universe and the body. Um, so that's what came to me. And that's what I called it after I made it. That's what it spoke to me about. So typically in soul collage, we use the phrase, I am the one who. So let's see if I can do it on the spot. Um, so I'm the one who finds the star of your, of your spine, who connects the universe and the stars to your body, who finds the connections and allows them to speak, who gives them freedom. I'm the one who dances the dance of healing and growth. Um, uh, so do you follow? Is that, that so that's kind of how the card works. So after you make a card, how is it speaking to you? And on any given day, it could say something else, right? So just like tarot or 
I would I prefer to call this more like a power deck. So that's just to give you an idea. So we're gonna make one for our co-creative self. Um, so we're gonna start by, um, this is typically what we do is create some safe space. So this is my source card. This is my essence card, which is like my divine spark. And then this is my witness card. And so whenever I'm doing readings or classes, or, so they um, sit with me. Um, so I typically also pick a card for a class. So I have, I don't know if I can be able to show this or not, but this is just one of my boxes of cards. I have 300 cards. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, so I'm gonna have someone, um, as I say, spirit pick. So you can use them as a divination process, if you will, or as a guidance. So that's the idea. Once you have a deck, basically you're consulting yourself and your higher self or however, whatever words you wanna use about that. So this is protector, my protector card. So isn't that interesting? So the shield over the head. So yes, I'm feeling a little nervous. <laughs> so this is uh, allows me to my freedom knowing that my protector card is here with me. So I'm gonna put that over with my other three. Um, so let's think about supplies well, before we start the video, okay? So um, we already talked about having some kind of cards or even regular paper, a magazine, scissors, glue stick, and anything you have actually. And if you don't have any card making things, um, even if you just had a magazine or a book or just follow along. And um, because when I start, most people don't have a deck yet. And so we can use mine. Um, so I won't read your cards for you, but you can borrow mine. Do you follow? So we'll see, but when we get there. So let's start with the video. It says a little bit more about me and how I really sort of launched into soul collage and one way in which it can be used. And it also ties into kind of who I am and what I think I'm doing in the world. <laughs> so still not clear yet. I realized that I'm coming up on my 10th anniversary of having gone on this trip and that I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go back this fall. It'll be the 10th anniversary and what's changed and what's the same and what's shifted. So anyway, so roll that. Okay. Footage. The ninth wave crystal vision 2012. Welcome to my collage of a spiritual journey. It is a meditation prayer and the convergence of healing modalities that have guided my path. The ninth wave in ancient Celtic mythology is the ninth wave out on the ocean, symbolically the boundary of the known world. To go beyond the ninth wave was to cross over into the unknown. Combined with the Chinese symbol of yin-yang, it came to represent for me the place of balance and choice. The choice to go deeper within the known or to expand into uncharted territory. This ninth wave concept has become a practice and a new way of seeing the world. The Azores, nine Portuguese islands in the Atlantic Ocean, sitting on a plateau shaped like a triangle, articulate the continental plates of North America, Europe, and Africa. I was guided to travel there, and they have now become powerfully transformational on my spiritual journey. The ninth wave is also part of a theory about the Mayan calendar. It believed that the final wave of enlightenment would occur on October 28, 2011. This inspired my return to the Azores and the island of Pico. I was guided to climb to the top of its mountain and deliver crystals to entity or location unknown to create healing energy for the three continents. 
Unable to complete the climb due to weather, I felt confused as to the next direction and awaited guidance. I created an altar with two crystals, collective consciousness and compassion. And while I was doubting my purpose and failure to deliver, the sun shone through the crystals and I saw nine sheep cross a hillside that had marks like the Azorean Plateau. Coming off the mountain, I saw overhead what looked like a jet stream in Morse code. Later, I met a woman who blessed me with dolphin spirit healing, which included the use of a triangle symbol. The next night, I was able to acquire a triangle-shaped dolphin crystal. These experiences confirmed my trust in spirit and guidance. Soul collage is a creative process of collaging images and putting them on 5 by 8 cards. They represent aspects of ourselves, giving voice to our dreams and fears. Once you have a group of cards, you can use them as a guidance tool. What showed up for me were many cards relating to diving, underwater worlds, mermaids, dolphins, stars, all clearly about my journeys to the Azores and possibly to ancient connections. I used eight of these cards to represent the eight islands I have visited for the meditation part of our time together. The island of Santa Maria, last on my list to visit, came to me as a Catholic prayer card. The crystals on these cards are dodecahedrons. The dodecahedron is comprised of 12 pentagonal faces it represents the fifth sacred element, the divine potentiality known as ether. I was guided to obtain 10 of these beauties for their energies to create a spiritual energy grid of healing for the nine islands of the Azores and the three continents. The Salvaggio frequencies contain the six plus three pure tonal notes that were once used to make up the ancient musical scale. The combination of these sacred tones had the power to penetrate deep into the recesses of the subconscious mind and promote great healing and transformation. The method of applying these notes to the islands follows the pattern of the Lo Shi square in the modality of Feng Shui. My journey has given you a view of the Azores and the modalities provide an energetic connection to healing possibilities. I invite you to take a leap of faith beyond the ninth wave and join me in meditation for the all of us. Wow. Wow. I know, it's a lot. <laughs> it's still a lot. Go ahead. I already have a question. Go ahead. Did did you find Atlantis in the Azores? <laughs> um, yes and no. Okay. I, I'm still um, discovering all that, particularly through classes I'm taking at Dominhor and meeting groups like you and. Um, I felt very alone for a long time. I just knew I, it felt like home. I didn't know how or why or um, why, you know, when I was called there, I, it wasn't a voice. It was just some sort of like command in my body that said, plan a trip and go do this. And I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> I mean, I've been a massage therapist a while, but I wasn't that woo woo, you know, it was, <laughs> it was a little mind bending and, um, yeah, so I've been, I keep going back and discovering more and keep meeting other folks that are getting it and making connections. And so, yeah, that's a whole nother thing, the Azores <laughs> and their magic. Um, but so, um, are there any other questions? I did mute some because there was some background noise, but if anybody has a question, just, just wave at me and I'll unmute you. Okay, we got, okay, David, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering what that obelisk was in, in the, some of the uh, photographs. The obelisk. Um, kind of a squarish obel obelisk. 
rectangles. rectangles. Look like a monument where you had your backpack next to it. Yes. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, the stone. That's a, it's a GPS marker. So on the mountain, it tells um, <laughs> it tells you the the feet, and it tells you like where because lots of people climb that mountain, and so it's a GPS thingy. Oh. And it's a great place to put your crystals and do stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Are you leading a group to the Azores? Um, yes. I've been saying that for three years. Um, when, I don't know. Um, Jennifer is planning one next year. Hmm. So, and I went on with someone else's group and a couple of my friends are saying, do your own. Why are you, you know, I guess it's a confidence thing. It's like, I don't feel like I know everything yet. I'm just, um, so that's my journey. That's my growth piece to um, put that all together. I am gonna put in the chat, the link to that video because the meditation part, so you can experience the whole thing again and again, cause it's just really just beautiful and very, the energy as Karen says, wow, what a transmission. So I'm going to put that in the chat. And it was a way to integrate different things that were going through my life at the time. And even the whole Mayan calendar ninth wave was new to me. That wasn't sort of part of my, you know, thinking or meditation. But when that came up and that date, I, I said, okay, when am I supposed to go? Boom. I was like, okay. I thought the Mayan calendar ended at 12, 12, 12, but here's this whole other date. Okay. And it was, it was powerful. It really was. And then that sky code, I mean, I was like, okay, is that a jet trail? Did, you know, you know, I didn't know what to do with that. That was new to me. I didn't understand, you know, I never experienced anything like that before. Well, we're, we're both pilots. Uh, I've never seen anything like that yeah, before. I have a few pilots on this call and uh, I have never seen anything. Like Mary, that. you seen anything like that? Wow. Wow. And that's. So I asked my mountain guide, I said, so what is that? And I said, you see it, right? Because sometimes, you know, not everyone sees the same thing. And he says, oh, yes. And, I, and he says, it's um, a love note from the universe, or it's a message from aliens. And he said this deadpan. So I, I don't know if he was kidding. I don't know. But either one of those was fine with me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I actually have a friend of mine who um, knows different languages. She said the closest thing that it comes to is Morse code, which made me then, there is an Air Force base in the Azores. And I thought, oh, well, maybe it's some sort of Air Force thing. And the whole other perspective was, well, maybe it was just something for you to see. It was a message for you. And he may have seen a different message. Maybe he didn't see the same thing. Maybe it was, you know, a message for you. And so then I kept it really secret. I was really kind of <laughs> afraid the men in black were gonna come get me. And, you know, I don't know, I'd stumbled upon some top secret <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, Thanks for sharing it with all of us. Now the men in black will show up at all of our houses. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it took me a while to share even this story. That's why it took me a year to make that video. I just didn't know what to do with all that. Anyway, so. The cards clearly played an important role and helped me process, you know, and I started making all these cards that were clearly about Atlantis or the ocean and maybe a past life as a mermaid, you know, so whether they're real or not, they, there's an energy there and helps process. So for me, gives form and voice to something. Yes, and then I can work with it. So this is one of the first cards that came after the, that Exorian experience. So this is what kind of represents what I felt like my mission was there. You know, these three continents, bringing some sort of message, delivering the crystal. Um, yeah. So. So did you, you have that card before you went to the Azores or you did it after? Um, oh, after. The first time I went was 
like 2005 or something. The second time I went was like 2010. And then this, that journey from the video was in 2011. Wow. So I've gone a couple of times and I've been back eight times since, and I have seen all the islands and I've been back to um, many of them. Okay, so soul collage. Um, hmm. We have an online community. Can you see that? Clear? No. Can you yes, guys see I that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I already talked about the soul essence and the source and the witness cards. So the, the, there are four suits. Um, some people use them, some people don't. Um, I've come to appreciate them. It took me a while to kind of get the hang of it. So these council community companion and committee are the suits. So the council suit is like archetypes, right? So what are some archetypes that we know about? Like the hero, right? The warrior, right? All kind, there are all kinds of, the co-creator, right? Is an archetype. There, there's a sense of hmm, what that might look like, act like, right? And then the com um, committee is how is that personalized in you? So you're, you know, who's running you? So who is the co-creator in you? So what does that look like? My co-creator might not look like your co-creator, right? So I might co-create, yeah, doing soul collage cards. You might co-create at church, uh, Bob and Noel, co-create by facilitating this page. Um, so it might be multiple ways. So that's the other aspect of the card making is how does it represent my inner self? So there's sort of this archetype, the council, the committee, how does, how does it show up in me? And then community is the people in my world. So fellow co-creators like yourself, so, or Barbara Hubbard, so I might make a card about her, you know, as someone in my co-creative community, or it might be the people in my real world. And so then, Lisa, is the idea to make cards about all each one of these uh, circles? Um, ultimately, today we're only gonna make one. I think we only have time for one. And we're just gonna see where it lands. So here's the thing. You can start with an intention about something and it, you could get something completely different as we know, right? It just depends on all kinds of factors. So you could say, oh, I wanna make my, um, well, it's a little easy. Like if you said my Barbara Hubbard card and you may have an image of her, but maybe not. You might pick something that looks like her. It might be about the energy of her or things she's done. That's, that could still be your Barbara card, right? Or it could be, so that's the thing. We're gonna go into meditation and kind of see what happens. So the beauty of collage is that it kind of, it's kind of like Traeger work and massage, you know, kind of turns your brain off, you know, and confuses you. You're kind of like, mm. so with collage, you're kind of moving the images around. You're kind of, um, it's a semi-meditation. You kind of see how do they fit together and they it creates a whole different energy. And as um, Sina talks about a netter, she talks about the netter being the energy of the card. Um, and so that's why it speaks. It can speak because it has a sort of an entity on of itself in a way. Um, final suit is the companion suit. And that's typically an animal totem that comes from a chakra through a meditation. But today, let's think about that. What are the different chakras that might go with co-creation? So right off the bat, we might say second chakra, orange, you know, second chakra. But what else goes in co-creation? Love, community, being part of a tribe. So sacral chakra might show up more for you. Or the heart chakra, because it might be more about love. 
could be all of them. So it's just another aspect. Yeah. Okay. So let's start by find. So does everyone have images to play with? Yes. No. I'm just trying to gauge. I mean, it's not a judgment. It's a. <laughs> okay. So here's uh, my magazine. So, so you just have to to draw your images. <laughs> yes, you can draw them. Mm -hmm. So also it's good to have some paper and pen nearby. So we're also gonna get into journaling. So right now I'm just gonna start you with um, just selecting some images. So open your magazine and um, go into sort of a semi-meditative state. So half close your eyes, no reading the articles or drooling over recipes. It's really turning the pages and seeing what image attracts you. So right here, I see, oh, look at these interesting colors. So it could be patterns or textures, or hmm, I like something about the way this kid and the arms, I'm gonna rip that out. Okay, so just rip it out. The idea is to keep moving, just kind of see what jumps out at you. So I don't know, this is kind of interesting patterns, stars, I don't know. So really not thinking too much, really kind of being in that, hmm, look at these beads in this necklace. Yummy texture, yummy color. And we're not planning any kind of collage yet. We're just seeing what, oh, she looks mysterious. All right, she's in. So you want about, um, oh, now these ladies are up to something. See, like that's sort of a dynamic. <laughs> They're making something. It might be gossip. I don't know. Um, you could also pick something for the color, right? So the pattern, the color. Oh, now look at those roses. Aren't they just delicious? I don't know how I'm going to use them. I'm just going for images at this point. Ooh, people crossing a bridge. That's kind of creative mode. candle. So I might just want the candle part of this image, not the whole thing. So we're just ripping them out. Well, that's bright and smiley. I'm not sure I want to, I wonder who Martha Stewart might be for me. That's okay. Oh, look, more flowers. So even if you're not doing it with us in this moment, you have the idea. Ooh, do we have any background music? Let me work on that for a moment. Okay, so how are you guys doing? Do you have five or 10 images? No, you need more time? Maybe you could type in the chat. Others need more time? Noel does. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, now look at this. That is like bright orange, right? So if I'm thinking second chakra. Yes, not. A nice golden egg. And unmute nice, yourself. Nice watery kind of. So here, I don't want the nasal spray, but do I want maybe the water? Yeah. So you have all your images. So also get something to write on. You went full size on that? I went like a journaling kind of thing. And so I'm gonna sort of lead a little meditation about co-creation. 
And then some people like to, when the moment hits them, they, they start writing or they want, I'm gonna pose some questions. You might wanna answer them or you might wanna start collaging. So I like that freedom. Everyone's different about, um, oh, one thing I forgot to say. So before we get started, get your images, like cut out all the ads, you know, get your image down to what we call rough cutting so that you can manage them a little better, right? Because you're gonna start kind of putting them together and seeing who wants to talk to whom and who's not really in the game anymore, right? But if you can, like this is way too big, right? So, you know, get it down to kind of a manageable size. And also like this woman, I'm not going to do fine details with her right now. So I rough cut her, right? So I have an idea of her size, but I'm not gonna do all the detail work just now. So kind of, Rough cut your images like here with Martha. I cut all the rest of it out. The part I probably want is mostly right there. So kind of rough cut a little, if you, like, you know, cut all the words off, kind of try and get down to what you think is the core of what, you're, what you might work with. So you don't, you're not, we're not using words or you could use words if you so chose. I'm sorry, generally we don't use words, but you can. There are no hard and fast rules or guidelines because the words can limit you. Okay. You may not think of something else. Um, but it's, I have many- Trying to unmute all so everybody can have a jamboree here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I found your, I'm gonna read your piece on, um, uh, your about on your page about creation, if I can find it, I keep losing it. There it is. So I'm going to read that as you guys sort your images and think about what we talked about before. So like group, right? What does it mean to be a co-creator? How does that show up for you? Who do you know that's one? What do they look like, act like? What do you do when you co-create? Okay, so I'm just gonna read and you guys kind of either write or make a card as we go and then I'll say cue and we'll add music and then go for another. Now where are we time-wise? Eight o'clock, we've gone an hour? Well, we've been an hour, we have a half hour left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we and so. We're doing this on community. Is that what you said? Pardon? This card is going to be on community. No, it can be any any about co-creation. Co-creation. Okay. Well, it could be. If, and are we supposed to get it down to the small size? If you can, but the, 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 work with whatever you want. But here's the thing: with the cards, ultimately, it's about a deck. And so five by seven right. works, but then you can stick it in a frame. But today, just to practice, to have fun with it, do whatever you want. Gotcha. I'll take a piece of paper then. Okay, full size. No. So, I do eight and a half by eleven. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show something to. It 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 is an art form. Uh, hold on, where'd you guys go? Uh, there. So like this bunch of flowers, I may ultimately only use one of them. You know, and you can reform any image into what you need or want. Um, like this little big necklace made with one stone. I might wind up with one stone. So the idea of a set size forces you to manipulate but go with it all right i'm going to read about co-creating and then you guys go and co-create can you set guys set a timer for 10 minutes sure i'll let you know because part, part of the stuff is sharing and um and 
and doing the finding the finding the words for the image to speak. Yeah. Okay. What is co-creation? The co-creator is emerging at this critical moment in history as we birth the more mature, evolved human expression on a wider scale. We are literally growing into a new human possibility. It means the root patterns of how we live, think, and move are going through a new evolution. The co-creator relinquishes the need to have power over others and celebrates the emergence of authentic partnership. The co-creator engages in supra-sex by joining their unique genius with others to design the community and organizations that can birth a new culture. Feminine co-creators and masculine co-creators are creating healthier families, organizations, and movements in which our individual genius is multiplied by co-creative intelligence. A co-creator is one who is able to tune into the process of creation within. Whether we call it God, spirit, source, consciousness, or creative love, it is the multi-billion year process of creation that has carried us from the origin of the universe to the present. This process of creation is becoming conscious in us as our own impulse to love more, to do more, to be more, and to realize our full potential selves. This mysterious God force is pulsing within us, signaling, intensifying, and motivating us to realize our full potential selves. It is awakening us to a new vision of ourselves as a co-creative universal humanity, born within a universe of billions of other planets, some of which may also be capable of giving birth to new life forms and new worlds. At the practical level, the co-creator goes beyond dominating modes of human existence to create fields of loving resonance that allow for deeper relationships, harmonious community, synergistic solutions to our collective challenges. In this way, a co-creator becomes an architect of a new society that is based on principles of sustainability, creativity, love, and opportunity. So a little music, please. And we'll go for another five minutes. Let's just work with what we got. Does anyone want to share? I'll turn on my lights. <laughs> um, hold on, I'm still making something here. I always. <laughs> That's as good as it gets for now. Okay. So um, you can so start by describing what's in the image or what's happening, and then um, who. Who, how that is for you as a co-creator, like what does that mean from the co-creative perspective? Did so, I hear someone wanted to start. Okay, I'm gonna spotlight whoever's gonna begin. Cliff, is that you? What's that? Are you gonna sure. go? Sure. I can start. Okay, okay, I'm gonna add a spotlight to you. There you go. <clears throat> and so, should I show this to you? Please. Sure. So if you want. Oh, sure. Um, 
Hmm. Cool. You did that. Wow. Can you pause on the last one a little longer? What was that? The top right. Is that like climbing in a tree? Yeah. All right, so share your story if you care to. Well, uh, this is, I've never done this before, which is neither here nor there. Um, I'm, I, I enjoy doing it. Uh, <clears throat> what, what came out for me as I was looking through things was people. And um, the... Uh, so there's, there's this guy climbing a tree, so he's getting some height. He's, uh, his his uh, perspective is changing on what he can see. Uh, in the middle is a beautiful uh, woman who's just very um, sure of herself and, and very uh, confident. The, um, the guy right there is the host of this old house and uh, his last name is O'Connor and mine's Connor. And so he showed up. And then this last one is a little baby with a dog. And we've got right now in our house, we've got two or three dogs. My daughter Ailish just had our first grandson about a month ago. And his name is Huckleberry. Oh, wow. And Congratulations. So, thank you. And so at the top, you can see the word spirit with some keys. So spirit is the key uh, through which creation occurs, but it has to have uh, cool. the hands of God to do that, and that's people. I like how it's over the head, like it's yeah going up. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thanks, Cliff. Or I, I, I just got to say, wow, you got on here and did your first collage. I say, <laughs> yay! <laughs> Bravo! Is there anybody else that hasn't ever done a collage before, let alone a soul collage? <laughs> okay and who would like to go next before i start calling on people <laughs> like talia <laughs> spotlight for everyone talia now you have to unmute doll hello <laughs> um I'm just still gathering pictures. Boy, I'm just amazed how yours came together just to be able to talk about it so quickly. And uh, I was, oh yeah, one of these, let's see if I can, and I haven't even decided which one of these I'm gonna use, but I love this gathering. Um, okay, I would invite us all to gather. In um, Show it to us. around one of these tables with a fire in the middle. Mm -hmm. And um, this is my image of coming together to give and receive mm -hmm. with um, around the fire as a community. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, what is it? If it was left up, if it was left up to me, I would write it down with the right hand down and the left hand up. And we're, we're all giving and receiving together. So I don't know, I just, I just love that image around a fire. It's the, the Tibetan fire symbol that I'm remembering that, or the energy of, of fire uh, around four or so people around a table or more giving and receiving together. 
I might have to get that symbol also from a card I have. <laughs> but, I'll tell you, that's also like CCC. What's the first thing we do first night? Oh, we gather around the fire. Absolutely. That's right. So that's a great, that's a great analogy also. Mm -hmm. so, and we share, we share from our experience, share from our hearts and our whatever songs we want to share that means something to us. I remember we, sh we brought our first grandchild into, um, into the world as we sang songs for her. She came oh, yeah. at the same time as that. So that, that's really a good memory. Awesome. Well, we need, we'll need to, um, don't need to cut you off, but we're getting a little short on time. We want others to share. Okay, um, I'll stop there. Okay, somebody else want to jump in here? Lisa, Thanks, you're, you're leading. I do want to say that um, I, I invite you to continue the process. Um, sounds like you've got a, a couple of cards in the making, perhaps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I remember some, let me just say this real fast if I can. It's, um, I remember making a collage, my favorite one. I just sat down one evening and it just, started coming together. It was just like a magical experience. And um, I don't know, I, I'm just waiting as you cut out the pieces and then all of a sudden just there yep. it goes. So I love that. Keep working it, Talia. <laughs> I'll do that. How about Teresa? You're muted, you'll have to, have to unmute. Can I have one more minute? I'm just got okay, two one things more I want minute. to add. Okay. okay. Start the clock. Flow. Flow. Okay. All right. So I have mine and it starts with working together here at the bottom and then spiritually working together and uh, looking Mm. Looking up at it. Okay, so then here I have networking. I'm not really sure how this all works, but it does. And then I have this art piece where it's like people are raising each other up. Mm. Mm. Okay, and I have a group of elephants here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the whale tail. And then... Um, this is my doorway, and that's actually leading to over here, which is kind of a heavenly spot. That's your portal. Yeah, that's my portal, my doorway. We had a portal of CCC one year. Yes. Or two or three. <laughs> I, I think it was reused again, right? <laughs> yeah. Or two, or two or three. <laughs> so yeah. That's, that's what I got. Thanks. Wonderful. And uh, okay. who would like to go next? Are we back to Teresa? Are we back to me? Okay. Yeah. Sure. So I got certified to teach yoga last year and it really changed my life. Um, I have become, you know, I've really gotten into meditation and I had this bird kind of this Phoenix kind of exploding, kind of enlightening. And then these are my little portals of change as I'm getting to my higher, truer self. So, wow. 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 And then there's wow. the moth because I've been doing a lot of work with the moon and like the moon salutations and the phases of the moon. And I've just, I've gotten into crystals. So I carry my crystals with me. And so, um, I'm, and I'm really into green. So I'm actually doing a workshop similar to this on the chakras. And we're going to do an art piece with each one. And that's why I came tonight. But um, so I did have the heart chakra in mind. That was my intention. So, so that's why you have a lot of green. A lot of green. Yep. Yeah. A lot of green. Yeah. That's awesome. Beautiful. So okay. Who has uh, it? Who has hope it you'll continue yet? to come back uh, to this community and uh, be a part of this. Thank you. I think I'm part of your tribe. I told Mary Jones that. <laughs> I said, you know, like Sorry, what Mary. Was four years ago, we met, like we went to something out at a church out in 
a little town and we got friendship bracelets and Mary and I grabbed the same one and oh. um, don't have it. It was the, the Pachamama, Pachamama Alliance. Yes. Pachamama Alliance, Awaken the Dreamer. Yep. Yep. I yep. still have mine on. Yep. I still have mine. I don't have it on right now. <laughs> I found mine like two days ago. I was digging and I found it. And so. Wonderful. Welcome home. Uh, in Welcome home. We expect to see you at the Co-Creators Convergence in uh, Montgomery, Texas. October. In October, yep. 13 through 17. I have it in, I have it in, the, uh, in the chat. So you can find it on our website. Mary, you ready to go? Sure. Thank you, Lisa, yeah. Teresa, that was Thank great. Thank you, Teresa, beautiful. I, don't, I have no, I, can you see this? I can't Bring see it in this. closer. Hang on, let me go. Okie doke. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started out with this big, the picture in the middle, which is just nature and peace. And, um, this, this flower spoke to me. I'm not sure why, but the intensity of, I guess, being able to get into it, it's like you can really look into it deeply. Um, this little stopwatch showed up in one of the things I cut out and it seemed like that was that like time has some has something going for me. Um, a man kind of here meditating and being solitude or thinking about whatever. Um, this is an older woman with the love thing made me think of our dear friend, Anna. Oh, um, beautiful. And then the, the bubbles up above is just the etherealness. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then there's fish, floating in an ocean over here in seaweed and um, peace, I guess, is what it just, that just gave, that just said peace to me, so. Wow, a yeah. lot of portals, time, common threads. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it means. Somebody tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, you can analyze it for me another day. <laughs> no, I just said, I said, look at how many of us have had portals um, I love these Zoom meetings, you know, I connection that we can still get, even though we're virtual, um, that we can still, like you said, if we were together, we would all be grabbing images, but it's like we still do, even though we're distanced, you know, we still had, I have three watches in mine. I have the circles and the portals. And so we have all these common threads. So, mm. Lovely. I don't know where she's going. <laughs> Go with her. <laughs> I am. Well, she, she's, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I pull her along. I told her, she, Mary, you should come. I'm signing up. She's like, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, don't look so happy, Mary. I'm uh, Karen. <laughs> hey, she is I happy. Fun. It was fun. Karen, do you want to jump Karen, in the circle want... here? All right. So I have this I was thinking about how I co-create when I travel around this planet of and I found this image of a very tall tall palm tree with the ocean in the background and a woman with a surfboard so surfing your soul and all these images came forth a long road just with you know sort of desert on the long side of it a lot of ocean a sailboat in there a mountaintop a little cantina because every now and then I do like to have a little margarita, cold beer, a glass of wine. So I added that in. And what I realized at a bookstore, of course, wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then there was this beautiful card. It was this picture of a tarot card that just came through this woman in strength. So as I was reflecting on it, and there's also in the very center, a tombstone. So for me, the reflection was how I co-create on my journey on this lifetime around before I end up back in the ground and my soul surfs off. surfs off and I just love that I think that this is I, I thought about how there's no people in it and then I realized it's truly a reflection of my soul and the peace and the strength it gets um, and the serenity when I'm traveling and coming to meet all of you wow so thank you so Bob and Noel you guys Soulful. are out okay and maybe David did David go David has a plan David, is it okay if we go a little bit over? Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, David, do you want to share now? Garble? I just have a uh, stuff I cut out. Uh, these are all nature. There's no people in any of them. No people whatsoever. But I figure this this one, <laughs> they're all huge, so I haven't actually put them together yet. But this one kind of represents to me co-creation. Can you see that? Yes. Ponds. With like with all the water coming together and, and um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and all mine are just nature stuff. Um, and like I said, and I haven't, animals. haven't uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of animals, a lot of uh, nurturing animals. Mm. You know, I love penguins. <laughs> and it's the father penguin that actually sits on the on the eggs until they're hatched for the king penguins. Let's move it up and a bit. You can see the he's yeah. exactly oh, yeah. like two little uh, chicks there. You see that? And uh, mm -hmm. here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, just a lot of nurturing, a lot of nature. Uh, and I feel like that's kind of what we do together. We nurture each other. And those little ponds, I feel like they represent each of us, those ponds that I showed you the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, and the water th flowing through them, you know, it's just everything flows through us on, on, in uh, CCC. And uh, mm. together we make a beautiful scenery, <laughs> beautiful nature together. Thank you. Thank you. And yet it's one water. Mm -hmm. And if you turn around, your backdrop there, Dave and Talia, are cascading <laughs> ponds with nature. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. perfect. Wow. Perfect. I'm loving Thanks, Dave. I've always loved nature, but it, lately it's been like um, I've experienced nature on a different, different level and co created with it. You know, that's what. Well, I, I think also, David, that you had in there about the penguin because you recently are uh, your grandfather had a big role as a grandfather. Right. And our little chicks have flown the, flown the coop now. They're up in, up in Colorado. Well, go get them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Is there anyone else who needs to? Bob, do you want to go? Lisa, is this all right that I'm just zooming around with people? Are you okay with that? Yeah, because you know everyone better. So it's actually, that's good, that's good. So my theme, co-creation, what is it? Well, there's sitting in that chair and reflecting. There's teaching our children. There's listening to nature. There's service to others. And you, plural, make it happen. Co-creation. The end. Awesome. Well, I'll follow Bob. Um, um, let me see. That's me in the middle. And I'm living in a dream. And everything's like a dream world. Because I've been doing A Course in Miracles. Which, of course, is everything on this planet is a is a hallucination and it's the same planet and then i have things like uh, a road map doesn't know where it's going and there are a lot of people up here and they all have different costumes but they they all gather and get together of course there always has to be a dog but everything <laughs> over here on this side is that says finding heroes because uh, we're all heroes in our in our dream and the dream of others but on this side, things are upside down. And so it's kind of like the left hemisphere versus uh, the right hemisphere. So here you have the brain and, and trying to figure things out and, and everybody brings a little piece. And uh, the, the heroes here is supposed to go on over here where it says finding heroes. That's what, the, what that is. But this is a very analytical side. And this is the very people side and, and travel and, and mystery and fun. But the thing is I'm really dreaming of is what I would say is the, the golden egg, the golden orb, the golden light that uh, is within each, each one of us. And um, like, like the ohm, 
uh, of meditation. So uh, I was interested to see that a lot of people had like squares or things like that. And mine is like a jumble and that's just my mind. So that's good. <laughs> So over to you, Lisa, and are we going to see your creation? Um, so I wanted to share this. Can you show my phone? Highlight my phone? It's not talking. So this is one way to kind of look at your card and give it voice. So um, it doesn't always have a name, but really say, who are you? What do you have to give me? What do you want from me? Um, what do you want to tell me? What message do you have for me? So those kind of prompting questions can help you look at your images more um, and maybe coalesce them into, you know, uh, give you a message. Okay, so. Um, So I put roses on her brazier to give her an outfit because otherwise she would, I think she was wearing underwear or something. <laughs> so I don't know, I was drawn to this whole um, abdominal area. And so I gave her orange there. So it feels, and with this bale of hay, mm. it feels moon like and something about the lamp and and she's sort of mermaidish. I. Yeah, I real I usually can whip it up for pretty fa much faster than that, but um, so it feels uh, like the creative womb, which um, water is emotion, mm -hmm. typically, and so pulling from the water to that creativity, to um, to that womb of creativity, that creates the cycle. Um, I'm sorry, I'm always massaging my collages. <laughs> I talk with I talk with my hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's as that's as that's the most I can say in the moment. Okay. Any, any so when we talk about each other's cards, we, it's like with dreams. We want to say, if that were my card, or I'm noticing. Um, so typically we don't analyze someone else's card, but you can say, oh, so something I see in that for myself. So does anyone want to practice that? <laughs> so, or what speaks to me about- Go ahead, your David. So what speaks to me about your uh, collage is, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a, a lamppost in the line, the witch in the wardrobe, and like that she's going to another realm. That could be. Yeah, there's something important about that lamppost, yeah. like important in that collage, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. Yes. Well, I see yes. the spiral of creation and you're a beacon of light in the darkness. And so you're, she's, she's sharing her, her, uh, her, her beauty spirit. Which is the orange chakra? Second. Second. Yes, yeah, so that's creative. creation. Creation. Generative. Okay. Mm -hmm. Regenerative and creation. Generative and creation. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Hmm. Awesome. Hmm. So let's see. So our homework is we continue to with those with those uh, notes, which we'll share with everybody that's on this within the Zoom room tonight. Um, we will um, continue to reflect on our collage, soul collage for tonight. Yeah. So here's something else as a group. Mm -hmm. So everyone hold up your cards as much as they are a card, right? And I don't know if we can see them all. Can we look at a gallery view of them all? We're in a gallery view. We're in gallery view now, or we are. Right, okay. <laughs> Yeah. In, individuals have to do their own gallery. Right? You, each individual has to do your gallery view, Lisa. So if you're not in gallery view, put yourself in gallery yeah. view. Yeah, top right corner. Do it on my phone. There. 
So, okay, so let's look at it as a group. So that's a whole nother way to use the cards is what's on, the- Liv, put yours up. So, um... There you go. So some of you have already commented that there were several portal-like feelings. Um, yes, the fire, the light. Any yeah, light similarities? Any vibes you're? Oh, this is my light. Say again. That that's my light. The golden light. The golden light. I see that in Karen's strength. Bob, yours and mine look like one collage. How about that? They look like what? The same. One, one collage. Yeah. <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> yeah, you, know. you know how that works. So I even see in Mary's uh, flower, I, uh, I saw that as a portal too. Oh yeah, I was thinking that too. Power the portal into the inner, the inner part of nature or the universe is inside of there. Who but knows? it's also the, the the golden ratio, the Fibonacci. Right. That the that's the how the flower grows. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's definite portal. And of course, Teresa has she she's multi portable. <laughs> of course, <it's> portable. <laughs> and, and flow is super super generator nuclear <laughs> portal. Well, but this portal here is pretty ancient. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to zip it, but this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, it has. Thank you. Thank you. This has been so, so beautiful. Such a co-creative process, as you can tell. We each have our part in it. So Lisa, thank you for thank letting you, us Lisa. delve into our souls. And uh, yeah, I would invite everyone to keep playing with your soul collage and post it on the co-creators Facebook page page and you know keep us informed so thank you everybody bob and noel for the uh wonderful techie support all in the background so appreciated and uh, we hope that you guys will also join us next thursday and you are welcome to be a conversationalist yourself you are welcome to invite others um july is almost all the way filled up so we're going to be booking for august and september and you can contact me for that. Yep. Karen's Thank one in the know. I just do whatever she tells me. <laughs> Noelle's Thank literally you, the wind beneath the wings. See you guys. <laughs> Good night. Have Good a night. Thank you, guys. Love you. Join us next week, June 10, when Ben Bowler, the founder of Unity Earth, will be joining us and having conversation and an event preview of the World Unity Week, which is from June 19 to 26. See you then.